Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. Following my two previous videos about Xing Yi and Bagua stabbing, I'd like to explain the same topic on Tai Chi. Again, I will not introduce those basic Tai Chi stepping patterns. Instead, I will focus on some important Tai Chi stepping principles based on the imagery concept. Before I keep going, I would like to tell you that if you would like to practice speaking Chinese terms, you can use my videos as a reference. Whenever you notice new Chinese terms, you can re re replay the, those words, practice the pronunciation, and remember their meanings. With time, you will know many fancy Chinese terms. Topics covered in this video include First, Zhong Yong and its impact. Second, Tai Chi overall imagery. Third, Wu Yixiang and his Tai Chi stepping imagery. Four, how to practice this. Five, demonstration. And six, takeaways. Since Tai Chi is a style possessing very rich cultural content, I will explain it more in this video in this aspect. First topic. Zhong Yong and its impact. I mentioned in my previous Tai Chi video that, regarding the philosophical perspective, actually Confucianism has had more impact on its theoretical foundation than anything else. Many people in the Tai Chi community, including China as well, and as the rest of the world, falsely believe that. Taoism is the main source of Tai Chi theory and the guiding principles, if not the only one. To correct this common misperception, first let me introduce the Zhong Yong concept. Confucius was the founding father of Confucianism, but his philosophical system was developed not only by Confucius himself, but also by generations of philosophers, scholars, and thinkers after him. Also, the key concepts of Confucianism have developed over many generations as well. To understand the Chinese culture better, one has to study Confucianism since it has maintained a leading position in the social political structure not only in China but also its neighboring nations for more than a thousand years. One has to objectively view history no matter what personal preferences to develop a good understanding of a culture and to better estimate its future direction. Now, let's talk about Zhong Yong. Zi Si, a Chinese philosopher from 481 to 402 BCE, is commonly believed to be the author of the book Zhong Yong. He was the grandson of Confucius, and his birth name was Kong Ji. I will explain the meaning of the concept Zhong Yong later, but for now, let's keep talking about the book. In the beginning, the book Zhong Yong was one volume of the book Record of Rights by Dai Sheng, also known as Dai the Younger. Dai here is the family name of Dai Sheng compiled the book based on his uncle Dai De's edition. Then in the Song Dynasty, about 960 to 1279. Zhu Xi, one of the most prominent Neo-Confucian scholars, as well as a historian, philosopher, and a politician, reorganized Confucian classics and made detailed commentaries. Especially, he selected four of them and regarded them as the four books that illustrated the core value and the belief system in Confucianism. Those four books are Da Xue O Great Learning, Zhong Yong O Doctrine of the Mean, 
《论语》哦，《Analex》《孟子》哦，《Montrose》。There are also five classics: 史《诗经》哦，《Classic of Poetry》《尚书》哦，《Book of Documents》《礼记》哦，《Book of Rites》，《易经》。Or Book of Changes, 春秋 or Spring and Autumn Annals. The four books and five classics are collectively called 四书五经 or four books and five classics. In the Ming and the Qing Dynasty, those documents became the core of the official curriculum for the civil servant examinations. A system that lasted for more than a thousand years for selecting bureaucrats by royal courts. Since the Zhongyong was part of the imperial examination system and it lasted for such a long period of time, we can imagine the impact this book had had over time. By the way, in a previous video, I mentioned that in my opinion. The social political system based on Confucianism was great for an agricultural society, but was not suitable for an industrial society. I believe it is one of the most important reasons for China falling behind the West about 200 years ago, since this system had dominated China until less than a hundred a century a century ago. And it is even more outdated in our current information area. However, for an individual's benefit, Confucius' teachings and wisdom can still offer a great deal of benefit in many aspects in our daily life, including cultivating relationships with others. I hope you can spend some time studying it. Now. Let's come back and focus on the book Zhongyong or Doctrine of the Mean. Zhongyong consists of two words, Zhong and Yong. Literally speaking, Zhong means middle, and Yong means constant. Therefore, Zhongyong can also be translated as constant mean or constant middle way or center, center and unchangeable. And、uh, others. To answer Confucian metaphysical questions, in the fourth chapter, this book says, "What heaven has conferred is called the nature, and accordance with this nature is called the path of duty. The regulation of this path is called instruction. The path may not be strayed from even for an instant." If it could be straight from it, would it would not be the path? Path here is similar to the concept of Tao in Taoism. This book emphasized the three guidelines. First, self watchfulness, which requires self education, self questioning, questioning, and self discipline during the process of self cultivation. Second, leniency, which requires understanding, concern, and tolerance to others. Three, sincerity, which means the connection between heaven and human. In practice, Zhongyong means many things related to the quality of a superior individual based on Confucian principle, including. Moderation, and rectitude, objectivity, sincerity, honesty, truthfulness,、um, propriety, equilibrium, lack of prejudice. According to this concept, one should avoid extremes and excesses. For example, emotions such as grief and joy should not be excessive, since. Both unregulated happiness and uncontrolled sorrow are harmful. A friend should not be too close or too distant, and so on. 
I only briefly introduced the Zhongyun concept to help us understand its use in Tai Chi. Now let's move on to Tai Chi. Second topic, Tai Chi overall imagery. Your first impression of Tai Chi imagery might be animal movement since some Tai Chi movements are described using animals. Well, Tai Chi imagery is not that simple. Based on my research and analysis, I would say that there are three levels of imagery in Tai Chi practice. They are macro level, meso level, and micro level. Macro level imagery is the overall guiding principles for the general Tai Chi practice. Meso level imagery is a specific guiding principle for specific practice such as stepping, silk reeling, body movement, and so on. Micro level imagery is used for specific movements, some forms such as a dragon on the ground, rooster stands on one leg, and so on. In this topic, we will focus on the overall imagery concept in Tai Chi practice. Like I introduced in my previous videos, one of the most important Tai Chi documents is Chen Xin's Tai Chi Chuan Adaptation. In this book, many important terms used to describe Tai Chi practice have been applied. Also, most of these terms such as Zhong Zheng or centralization, He Xie or harmonization, Wai Shi An Shu, Nei Gu Jing Shen O, Be tranquil externally, strengthen the spirit internally, and so on. We can say that the basic principle and the main characteristics of Tai Chi practice in terms of self-cultivation and self-defense reflects the Confucian concept of constant mean. Also, you can see the same concept in Wei Xiang's Tai Chi classics as well. Furthermore, Tai Chi's neutralization is the application of the aesthetic conception of Yi Jing and its spirit. The harmonization and integration of yin and yang, rigid and soft, strong and weak, dynamic and static, also reflects the concept of a constant mean. I prefer to use another term, Tai He Yuan Qi, or Great Harmonized Pre-Primordial Energy to describe the mental state of overall Tai Chi practice, which is the direct explanation of Zhong Yong concept. Therefore, in Tai Chi practice, the overall imagery to guide the style is the Zhong Yong concept through Tai He Yuan Qi imagery, to imagine that the body and its surroundings are full of energy during Tai Chi practice, and we become part of the harmonized energy without excessive effort. This is my definition of the Marco level imagery concept in Tai Chi overall practice. Topic 3 Wu Yixiang and his Tai Chi stepping imagery. Wu Yixiang is a very important name in Tai Chi history on account of his uh, contribution to the development of Tai Chi theory. In his writings, he not only explained the application of Zhong Yong concept in guiding Tai Chi principle, but he also talked about the imagery of Tai Chi stepping as one of the mezzo level principles. I will focus on this concept in this topic. I have a question. What is the overall imagery of Tai Chi stepping? Your answer may be that we, we step forward, backward, or whatsoever. But that is the specific stepping method in terms of uh, directions, not the imagery in stepping. The actual imagery is to step like a kite. I introduced the first Tai Chi classic document, 
连让堂太极拳谱 o r Tai Chi Document of Lian Rang Tang, edited and published by Li Yiyu. In this book, most of the contents were contributed by Wu Yuxiang. Wang Zhongyue's Tai Chi Document was collected in this book as well. So, in the Tai Chi community, Wu Yuxiang is considered as the main contributor of this Tai Chi classic. Before I tell you the answer, let me show you a video. Mommy, 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 hey, mommy, mommy, mommy. By the way, this is my cat. Her name is Mommy. I learned Tai Chi stepping from her, just like how some mythical figure created Tai Chi from watching some animals fight. Of course, I'm kidding about learning from the cat. But do you see what I mean here? Both claims are equally ridiculous. Now, let's verify the answer by checking one sentence in Wu Yixiang's Tai Chi classics. It is Mai Bu Ru Mao Xing, or Step Like a Cat. This sentence can be treated as the mezzo level imagery concept in Tai Chi practice. More specifically, it is used to guide Tai Chi stepping principles. In our daily walking activity, our back leg supports our body weight. When the front foot lands on the ground, our body weight will transfer to the front foot right away. The problem here is that if there is an obstacle blocking the front foot, then we will lose balance. In martial art practice, that is a taboo. So, what is the proper Tai Chi stepping? Well, it requires us to transfer our body weight only after our front foot becomes stable on the ground instead of suddenly transferring our weight to the front foot as our daily walking activity. We should be able to withdraw our front foot easily if we notice that we cannot have a stable stance. It's just like a cat walking. When a cat walks, its stepping is very light and vigilant. Its body weight will be transferred only after the step becomes stable. In Tai Chi stepping, when lifting the foot, the in we initiate the upward movement of the knee from the hip and the thigh. Then we, then we use the knee to lift the, knee, the heel, then, and then the heel lifts the toes. When landing on the ground, the heel lands first when the ball of the foot and then the weight is shifted by following the sequence of action of knee, hip, and the waist. It's just like a cat walking. By the way, sometimes people call it tiger stepping as well. So, step like a cat is an application of an imagery concept in Tai Chi stepping. Topic 4. How to practice it? I would like to introduce some principle first, then demonstrate it in the next topic. To help you memorize them, I would like to read it in Chinese. It is Ding Jin Bu Diu, Yao Kua Zhe Die, Zuo Chen Yu Ti, Yi Qi Xiang Lian. In English, they are Maintain an upward intention, fold and open with waist and the hips. Lift the left, sink the right. Coordinate the energy and the mind. Now, let me explain them for you. First, maintain an upward intention. I use the word intention instead of the word motion to emphasize the importance of the mind. Yes, the mind creates motion. However, motion in and itself would become very physical. Upward motion is more appropriate than motion in emphasizing a state of vigilance during motion. So, when transferring the body weight, you should sink the body downward, but still the head should always maintain the upward intention. To do it properly, you will feel that the body becomes light still of a heavy feeling. Second, 
folding and opening motion with waist and hips. In Tai Chi practice, we have to differentiate waist and hips, which was mentioned in my previous Tai Chi video. When shifting the weight, the hip and the waist area on top of the supporting leg should have a sinking and a folding motion in order to better create a dynamic balance. Then extend the hip and the waist area after the weight has shifted. The folding and the opening motion on the hips and the waist, especially the movement of the hips, are commonly neglected by many Tai Chi practitioners. So please pay attention to this practice. 3. Lifting the left when sinking the right. It means that when we lift the left leg, and then we have to sink the right hip, and likewise for the right leg and the left hip. The key practice is that we use our hips as a leverage. Also, with forward stepping movement, the hips become a three-dimensional gear. Together with the lower back area, they create a triangle, which is the source of power. This is why in Tai Chi classics, it says Ming Yi Yuan Tou Zai Yao Xi, or the power and the energy lies in the lower back area. The term lower back area means the triangle created by hips and the lower back area. Please pay special attention to this area, especially the gear-like motion of that area, since it is the source of power in Tai Chi. 4. Coordinate the energy and the mind. I'm sure you have heard about this term for a long time, and you must have been always reminding yourself in practice to coordinate your energy and your mind. However, in the way the track shifting exercise, what I would like to remind you here is to imitate the motion of a cat. The mind here means the vigilant feelings, and the energy here means the gear motion. So, the whole body should maintain a light feeling including both energy and mind. Please visualize this motion in your Tai Chi stepping movement by focusing on both energy and mind. Topic 5. Demonstration In martial art teaching, concept should be demonstrated by physical movement, or they would become empty words. Today, I would like to demonstrate two types of Tai Chi stepping exercise. The first one is based on the Gong Bu or Bao stance. The second one is based on Ma Bu or Horse stance. The first one is an easier one, and the second one is a bit more challenging, since it involves more weight shifting and folding motion on the hips and the waist. Let me demonstrate the first one. Please. Pay attention here. After the weight has shifted to the front foot, the front leg should have a small motion of zuo kua ti qi, sinking the front hip and have an intention of lifting the front knee upward. Usually, this is considered as a tai chi secret to some people. The first one, the first one. You keep like this stance from here. Then forward, then shift the weight, in, then step, then in, then step, then in, then step. Let me demonstrate the second one. Please pay attention to the sinking motion on the hip of the supporting leg which is usually neglected by many people in the Tai Chi community. So, in order to emphasize this practice, I modified the popular practice of this movement and by adding the folding motion of the hip on the supporting leg, plus a turning motion of the back foot on the ball area. Now, the second one. So, we take a 45 degree stance. So, we start from here. Okay. First, shift the weight, then turn the foot, shift the weight, then rotate the foot, bend the hip, then 45 degree. 
shift weight, bike turn, shift weight, rotate, then out, shift weight, bike turn, then shift weight, turn, then stop. So there are few more procedures for the second type of. For example, shift weight, then turn, rotate, then stop, shift weight, bike, then turn again, then stop. Topic six, take aways. Zhong Yong, as a philosophical concept in Confucian system, is the guiding principle in Tai Chi overall imagery practice. Please visualize the Tai He Yuan Qi, or the great harmonized primordial energy in Tai Chi practice. It is a great imagery to improve your micro level practice, especially for the purpose of self cultivation through Tai Chi. Second, beside Wang Dongyue and Chen Xin, Wu Yuxiang introduced the Tai Chi stepping by using the imagery concept, which is, a, is, which is to step like a cat. I called the meso level imagery, which manages the specific category of a practice such as stepping, body movement, and so on. Three. Four of the Tai Chi practical principles about the stepping and the two demonstrations of related practice has been introduced. I hope you will practice the second one, which is based on the Ma Bu or horse dance created by myself, and it is a bit more challenging but produces great results. Thank you for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.